Janice, are you there? At your service, sir. Interview with Tom Lankins. Will do, sir. <laughs> and, and in your heart of hearts, do you believe women are gold diggers? Uh, those who can do. Okay. Those, those who can't uh, carry big purses, get their nails done regularly, and they go to Weight Watchers, but they never lose the weight. I stopped getting married. Tom Likas, 2022. Learn from your elders. Experience is a great teacher. Welcome to Management Highlights Daily. If you are a veteran in this space, the name Tom Likens immediately rings a bell. To me, he was the first one that was cooking women on the air. On the air meaning radio. It was the manosphere that introduced me to his content and it says a lot about the age of the knowledge we are spreading in this space. Tom Likens had a radio show from 1994 until 2009. It was a controversial radio show with the red pill knowledge he was spreading. And before we get into this, I would like you to hear this because time has changed. For me, um it isn't about having a boss because I've learned a lot from people in the radio business over my time. The thing for me is that the business is sick. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's on its deathbed. Um, it's sad because uh, I grew up in radio and every time in my life I owed a radio. So people hear me saying these things about radio and they think I hate radio or I'm bitter for some reason. Why would I be bitter? I'm loving this here. I, I, I'm, I have nothing to be bitter about. The point is, I, I maybe I feel like the, the Iceman after Frigidaire came in. Or maybe I feel like the stagecoach driver after the city bus company was founded. You know? Yeah. Radio had a, has had a good long run it, as a as an audio platform. Radio's had a much longer run than any of them. Eight track tapes, cassettes, DAT, whatever. Uh, radio's the the long running one, but it's done. Uh, yeah. And it's not just radio; it's also any linear broadcasting, television, um, because people are streaming shows now. They don't need to uh, tune into their local independent station and watch shows. They can watch them at their convenience. I've never been a radio guy. It was television and the internet. That's why it's essential that we keep this information coming and use the new and or advanced platforms to spread the message so men can protect themselves at all times. This interview with Tom Likas comes from the Streaming Legends with PJ channel. The link is in the description. Tom Likas shares some of his experiences with us so we can learn. I'm going to let the highlights play and I will chime in here and there. So let's, so let's get, get this highlight, highlight real started. started. Did you get a lot of hate mail from women about trying to teach men how to get laid and how to spend less money on oh, them? I think one of your things was never spend more than $40 on a woman. Correct, ever. Uh, and um, if she really loves you, she'll never figure out that that was a cubic zirconia ring, okay? <laughs> <laughs> really loves you, she will oh. not take it in to have it evaluate. <laughs> so why, why spend ten thousand dollars on an engagement ring? Why do that? Were you serious about that? I mean, because mm -hmm. if somebody, if you give somebody you love a ring and then they cherish it, and then fifteen years later it gets chipped or gets loosened, they take it in, and the jeweler says, "But this ring is like cubic zirconian; it's not worth anything." Yeah, but the, the idea of it is, if you love me, you don't care how much that ring cost. You you, you cherish the ring because I gave it to you and asked you to marry me. Right. So you're now exposing yourself as the gold digger you truly are. <laughs> He's absolutely right. The ring is a symbol of commitment. It shouldn't matter how much it costs. But that's modern society for you. It's a world of materialism. Can't flex a $10 ring on Instagram. Can't have a simple wedding. Like Paris Hilton said, go big or go home. <laughs> and, and in your heart of hearts, do you believe women are gold diggers? Uh, those who can do. Okay. Those those who can't uh, carry big purses, get their nails done regularly, and they go to Weight Watchers, but they never lose the weight. Hmm. <laughs> Active women are gold diggers. The kind of women you want to date are gold diggers. The women you don't want to date, the nice girls with the round faces, who people always say, she has such a beautiful face. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not gold diggers because they can't be gold diggers. They have nothing to sell. So, I know you've been married several times. Is it four? Four. Were there 
gold diggers or were they just people you fell out of love with or they fell out of love with or what was um, it? Well, uh, to, to be honest, uh, uh, my, my first marriage, uh, we had an agreement before we got married that we were not going to have kids because as everybody knows, I don't want to have kids. Right. And then my first ex um, had a 43 year old aunt who had a surprise baby at 43. Ooh. And so she went out to see the baby. And when she came back, she said, I have to have a baby. I said, but we have an agreement. We talked about this. Now, I'm sorry. I, I, a woman has a right to change her mind. I said, well, so does a man. And six weeks later, I was out. <laughs> really? That fast? You just checked out? That was it? Um, she didn't indicate that she was interested in negotiating or discussing. The decision was made. Mm. That doesn't happen with me. Nobody makes the decision without me. Right. This story sounds familiar, right? Check this out. For some reason, since Birdie's been born and I've spent a lot of time with Birdie, it has just brought up these feelings of really wanting to be a mom. And I don't know if I would regret it later on in life if I wasn't. People can change their minds. It is what it is. That's why it only makes sense that you protect yourself at all times. Right, right. So you hammer all that out in advance and is it in writing or just kind of a oral agreement? Well, when I was 18, so I, I couldn't yeah. afford to have a lawyer, but you know, I mean, look, she, she was honest enough to tell me when she changed her mind uh, and she did change her mind, but um, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so that was just not a tenable situation. I had to get out of there. Right. Um, we're still friendly. We talk to each other maybe every 10 years. <laughs> she, by the way, here's a funny story about that. She called me in 1991, 15 years after we broke up. She called yeah. me in my home in Laurel Canyon. Okay. And she, she explained who she was. And she said, <laughs> and she said to me, uh, you know, I just wanted to apologize to you because breaking up with you was the biggest mistake of my life. I never got married again. I never had kids. And you know, if I had stayed with you, things would have just been fine. Yeah. And they would have been fine because we had a great relationship. But um, I, amazingly, I couldn't believe I got this call. And now it's 30 years ago. I got this call apologizing to me for that. We can't look into the future. His ex-wife made a choice and unfortunately it didn't go the way she wanted. This was Tom Lyke's best wife. They were young and he wasn't established yet. So listen to the story of his second wife. Wow. That's My, a, that uh, is one. Oh yeah. My second wife, she is a, she's a LA TV news reporter who, uh, uh, well, he, uh, when I got her a job in television, she fell in love with her cameraman and started going off on trips using my American Express card to pay for those trips. Then at, at what point did she fall in love with your cameraman and start using your card and you started seeing bills coming in saying, you no. know, we're in Solvang or wherever we are? And well, we lived in Phoenix before uh, I moved to LA to work at KFI. Okay. And so um, uh, to, I, I was in LA and she was saying, I'm not gonna move to LA until I get a job there in TV. And that's why I moved heaven and earth to get her a TV show. Of course. So, uh, so anyway, what happened was that uh, while I was in LA, I started getting the bills from the Market Express or the <laughs> phone company. Um, her man was married also. And um, every, whatever night it was, Tuesday night, what night was Dynasty on? Um, this guy's wife would watch Dynasty. Oh. And so he would run down to the local supermarket, make a collect call to my house, so it wouldn't be on his phone bill. Right. And, and would talk for an hour solid every, I think it was Tuesday night at nine o'clock. Wow. And <laughs> um, so I started seeing these bills. And then there was the time she went to cover the uh, Mexican presidential election. And I said, what hotel will you be staying at? <laughs> so she kind of mumbled the name of a hotel. I said, do you have the phone number so I can you know, say hi to you every night? She said, thinking I was born yesterday, she said, oh, you know, a lot of hotels in Mexico don't have telephones. Oh, really? <laughs> well, there's a clue. There's a yeah. clue for you. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so you hit her with this? Did you just come out and say, look, I know what oh, you're doing? Or how, how did you uncover Well, it? what I did was I flew back to Phoenix, uh -huh. 
where the movers were packing our things to move them to my apartment in West Hollywood. Wow. And so I was going through the boxes that the uh, movers were, were packing. And one of the movers came to me and said, this looked important. So I thought I'd give it to you. And it was a file folder and it had love notes, cards, Whoa. bills for various things. She, uh, she had checked into a hotel literally one and a half miles up the hill from where we live. Oh and uh, when I asked her about this, she said to me, well, they have a pool. And I said, we have a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but their pool is stocked with men. <laughs> you, you took my America's Dress Guard <laughs> and you made a, a reservation at a hotel in the neighborhood so you could use their pool. <laughs> and I said, well, you know what I have here? And this shocked her. I said, I've got, I've got your hotel statement. And uh, I can't believe how hungry you must have been because you had uh, two chicken salads, uh, two, um, you know, what I say, two of everything. Two yeah. Of and I said, you, you, you ate all that, really? Uh, but it, it took her about another uh, 10 years to admit, or 12 years to admit what had happened there. His second wife was and still is a reporter for Fox, and it could ruin her career if she confessed to cheating on Tom Likens, the man that got her in this business in the first place. She clearly used them. Now listen to what Tom has to say about this. Wow. So all of these, uh, you, you get a life lesson out of every one. Um, I, I generally don't try to blame it on the women involved because it was my fault for giving them the key to the front door. So I take responsibility. I own it. I own it. And so um, I, I stopped getting married. <laughs> <laughs> he takes responsibility for his actions. That's what I need you to understand. The choice is yours. We provide you with the information, but at the end of the day, you are responsible for the decisions you make. Tom Likas has been married four times. His knowledge comes from experience. Same thing with John Zena. That 75 page contract is constructed based on experience. So these loopholes are taken care of because in his first marriage, there was a prenup and his ex-wife found a loophole to get more out of Cena. Learn from these guys, learn from your elders. Thank you very much for the content, Mr. Tom Likas. And I, I wanna make clear to anyone watching that um, you know, an awful lot of people uh, in and out of the business try to tell me I'm bitter and, and, and the reality is, that was a great time in my life that I enjoyed and appreciated. CBS lived up to their word and paid me every penny they owed me for the time I worked there. I live a great life and I have nothing to be bitter about. It, how can you be bitter? It's, it's like being bitter when the silent movies ended and the talkies came in. I mean, look, that's what happens. And some people have squeaky voices and are not gonna adapt. And, and, and some have beautiful voices and are gonna thrive. Um, in my case, I'm doing, you know, what makes sense to me now, which is to do, uh, first I did a live stream for several years and now I do a podcast where people press the play button like they want to and they hear the episode from start to finish. So i um, very happy about my career and I'm very happy about where I am now. Manosphere, we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.